How are signals reconstructed from digital samples? And here we've got some numbers, which are the digital samples stored in a computer or a memory stick or on a mobile phone, for example. The numbers 2, 2.51, and so on. These are just numbers stored in discrete form. Now, the question is, how do we turn them back into the music that we can play out of a speaker and we can hear it? So we need to go back to the analog domain. So the first thing to do is we can think about this, uh, these numbers in the time domain by thinking of them as delta functions at the times when those samples occurred. So the first sample was, is of height 2 at time 0. And then the next one was sampled at time t. Let's say there's a period, a sampling period of t. And so this would be 2t, 3t, and so on. And let's just look at this very carefully. These are impulses. And in between those times, this is continuous time now, in between, it's zero. So if we were to somehow play this out, then we would get these spiky impulses with nothing in between. And that would not be something that we could uh, hear uh, and, and sound like the original waveform. And let's understand why that is. So let's look in the frequency domain. So if we look in the frequency domain and look at what is the Fourier transform of this waveform here, and the Fourier transform is given over here. And you can see, as expected and as we know about from Fourier transforms, that the, the low pass transform of the original signal, which is what is shown here, once it's sampled, there are copies of it repeating at the sampling frequency, the negative sampling frequency, twice the sampling frequency, and so on. And for information on this and sampling, uh, there's other videos on the channel, and so check out the description below. So we can either think in the time domain and think, how do we turn this back into a continuous waveform? This is the reconstruction. Or we can also think in the frequency domain and we can think, how do we get rid of these aliased copies? Because the original waveform did not have these aliased copies in the frequency domain. If we think back to the time domain, let's think of something that we could do to try to reconstruct. And here's the first thing we might think about doing. We might think about using what's called a zero order hold filter. So if we were to put this impulse train, this set of impulses, as an input into a filter that had this impulse response, then what would we be getting out? Let's just think about that for a minute. So it's, uh, we can do that directly here because this is a, fun, this is a quite uh, simple impulse response. It just simply holds the value uh, for that amount of time. That's what the constant is. So we can do it here, and I'll, let's do it now. So if we put in an impulse of height 2 here, which is what this is, two of these uh, units height, into this, we will get a function coming out that has this shape with a height of 2. So that would be a straight line across here. Then at the next time instant, we've got 2.5. So we'll get a straight line across here coming out. And at the next time instant, it is 1. So this will come down to 1. Uh, up to 1.5 uh, here, up to 2, and down back to 1.5. So this would be the signal that we would be getting out if we used a zero order hold reconstruction filter. So in every DAC, digital to analog converter, there will be a filter. This is the most basic one. Now we can clearly see this signal here does not look like what the original sampled waveform, uh, the original waveform would look like. There's, there's obviously all these quantization elements happening here. So this is not going to be a fantastic reconstruction filter. Let's understand why. Let's look in the frequency domain now. So here we can look in the frequency domain and we can think, well, what is the Fourier transform of this impulse response? Well, this is a square function. So the Fourier transform of the square is a sync function. So let me draw that over here, and the sync function will be coming down at this sampling frequency. I should make the point here that the sampling frequency is 1 divided by t, because these are t apart. And so this is a sync function at the sampling frequency. And I'm just drawing, plotting the magnitude of it here, uh, over here in the, um, on this plot here. We're just showing the magnitude, but of course it's a complex, uh, represent, a complex 
uh, Fourier transform, but this is the magnitude I'm plotting here. And we can clearly see if we are convolving in the time domain, which is what you do when you put an impulse uh, in, uh, a sequence into a filter, you are convolving those two. And we know a property of Fourier transforms is that if you convolve in the time domain, then you are doing the equivalent of multiplying in the frequency domain. So we, we, we did this convolution in order to get this waveform here. And then in the frequency domain, we're multiplying. So clearly we can see that if we use this zero order hold filter, we are not removing the copies at the sampling frequency and twice the sampling frequency and so on. Okay, so what we need to do, we, we, we have suppressed them because you can see this is going down smaller and smaller. So we're compressing them, but by multiplying these two, we can see they've not gone away. And we can see that clearly, that's a clearly indication that we have not recovered a nice smooth waveform in the time domain. So let's think of something that we can do that's a bit more advanced from a zero order hold. And so something we could do there is what's called a first order hold. So in this case, it's a triangle. And let me draw what comes out of this. And we'll just make the important point that there's now going to be a delay, which we'll see. So let's see if we've got this impulse coming into this filter, then it will respond with that triangle. So it will start at this time and it will respond with that triangle. And I'm going to draw it in pencil because we've got to add these up afterwards because that's what happens when you put a signal into an impulse, uh, into a filter, you've got to have the convolution, which means you are doing all of the impulse responses and then adding them up. So then the next impulse gives 2.5. So the height of the triangle, this will now start at that time and it will go up to 2.5 and then come back down. Uh, this impulse here put through this filter will give a response that is of height one. And that happens at this time. We can see this here. The next one is 1.5. So this is going to be this one. The next one is two and then back to 1.5 for that particular sequence I had. So this I've drawn here, the, the in pencil, I've drawn the responses to each individual impulse. Now, of course, we've got to, to find the overall waveform. We've got to add up all these responses. So that is clearly up to here. And then whatever comes, when we're adding these two, the, 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 this signal's going down, but this one's increasing. And you can confirm for yourself that that will give you a straight line between the peaks. So we'll get a signal now, which is the straight line between each of these peaks, and that will be our output signal. So we've gone from having a signal here, which, uh, which with a zero order hold had this shape here, to with a first order hold, we have this shape here. And this is more smooth, a much smoother shape here from this, uh, uh, with the result of this filter. So this is looking more like what we think uh, might sound good. Um, now let's look in the frequency domain. Well, what are we going to see in the frequency domain for this filter? Well, the Fourier transform of this, what is that? Well, one way to think about it is this function here is the result of this function convolved with itself. And so again, you can see uh, there's another video on the channel about convolution of a square with a rectangle. Uh, and if you do a square with a square or a rectangle with a rectangle, uh, either way, you'll see that you get a triangle. So you can check out that video if you're not familiar with it. So here we've got a convolution of two squares to give us this in the time domain. That means in the frequency domain, we will have a multiplication of this because again, convolution in the time domain is multiplication of the frequency. So here, the Fourier transform of this impulse response uh, here is now the square of this one. And that looks like something that's a bit more compressed and uh, smoothed out like this. So we can see uh, already we're getting an advantage here because these are smaller than these. These side lobes here are smaller than these because they're less than one. Uh, and so these are now compressing these copies more than the zero order hold did. So again, we look in the time domain and we see a more smoothed out signal. So we think it's a better impulse response. And in the frequency domain, it's also confirmed because we can see in the frequency domain, when we're multiplying these two in the frequency domain, these will be suppressed more by this filter here, um, which is the square of this one. Okay, so this is uh, getting more towards an, a, a, a good uh, response. Now, one thing we've noticed is that there's a delay in this picture here because this had to respond up with a line and go down. This covered a time period of 2t, 
this was only over t. And so you can see there's a delay from where this sample was when it plays out. The result of that sample is most going to be heard one time slot later. And so we have to be aware of that delay. Um, but gen in general, this is a better filter. So it produces something that would be more close to the original sampled waveform if we replayed it. Now the question is, is there an optimal thing to do? And yes, there is. And here's the optimal. The optimal thing to do is with an ideal low pass filter. And we look in the frequency domain first here to see exactly why this filter here allows a full passing of all of the signal that's within the band and zero, fully zeroes out all of the contributions which are outside that band. So this ideal low pass filter is going to remove all of these copies. Now let's see what it does in the time domain now. And so the time domain impulse response is the inverse Fourier transform of this function here. So clearly we want this to be an ideal low pass filter. We need this to get rid of those exactly. And so the inverse Fourier transform is a sync function. And the one thing with a sync is, again, there's the time offset as there was with the first order hold. But actually, if we really think about it, the time offset or the delay is actually infinite. Now I've drawn it here with a delay of one because I put the peak at t, but actually you can see this goes to negative time. And what that means with negative time is, well, in reality, if you tried to implement this in reality, you'd need to have the whole thing shifted to positive time because we can only ever have a causal system in reality. And we'd have to shift it an infinite amount of time into the future because this tail of a sync function goes back to negative infinite time. And so clearly, we, this is why we call it an ideal low pass filter because it's ideal in that it gets rid of all the copies, but you can't do it in practice because you can't actually implement all of these tail going right the way back to infinity. So you can never have this exact function. But let's see what you would get if you could have it. And let's think in the time domain to, uh, to think, and I'm going to do it with this one offset of T here. So in the time domain, uh, if we've got this impulse goes into this, uh, in this filter, it will respond with a height of two. At, again, we'll have a, uh, I'm just going to draw it here with a time to the offset of one, because what you can do is you can implement it without this negative tail uh, and do an approximation to a sync. But I'm just going to draw it now uh, for that whole uh, one there and we'll draw it with a one time offset, but you can see what it's going to be. And this is what, how it would look for that one. This one's going to give us an offset here. It's going to start at this time so that that will appear there at 2.5 uh, height. And, and we see that it looks like this. And then the next one we had at one. So there's a, a height of one there for that one. It's a small one. Uh, and then the next one we had at uh, 1.5 uh, there and uh, going down here. And I'll just draw the last two here. Uh, this one here coming uh, like this. And I can't draw all of the tails exactly, but I'm just sketching the example here. And then the next one's going to come like this. OK, and so again, overall, I should have drawn those ones in pencil like I did the other one. And also I'll draw the overall in pencil now. So overall, you're getting a smooth waveform, which is the addition of these two here. So now I've drawn the overall waveform in pencil here now, uh, and you're getting a smooth waveform. Now, this is the ideal and this would be the exact signal that was sampled originally to generate these numbers. And if you played that out of a speaker, then it would sound like the original music exactly. And you might think here, if you look here and you see, well, we're adding these individual components. Uh, these two components here, sometimes you look here and they see these two components here, uh, surely they add up to more than that number there. But don't forget, there's these negative components here as well from the negative part of the sync function. So it is true that all of these components, including the negative components here, will add up to give that nice smooth shape over the top. So this is the optimal filter, the ideal low pass filter. It can't be done in practice, but now you can visualize in the time domain what would be able to happen. Uh, but of course, you've got that problem with the delay. So uh, it depends on the complexity of the digital to analog converter, a reconstruction filter that you want to implement. You could build a cheap one with a zero order, order hold, a more expensive one with a first order hold, or a, a, an, something that's even more with a, an approximation to a sync function would give you the best kind of output 
from a digital to analog converter if you had that reconstruction filter. So hopefully this has given you more insight into how reconstruction happens in digital to analog converters from sampled signals. And if it did, uh, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, it helps others to find the video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the webpage in the description below where there's a fully categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.